A few questions that are important for our exam. The differential diagnosis of leukocoria. Leukocoria always does not indicate a retinoblastoma. Sometimes it can occur due to a congenital cataract or a persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. Now, this is very difficult to differentiate from retinoblastoma. Now, let's try to understand what is this persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. We know that vitreous occurs in three stages while it's forming in the fetus. The primary vitreous after the baby is born, it's, it disappears completely. Because it is vascular, it disappears because we need a you know clear visual axis. However, if it persists, that condition is known as our persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous and it will result in leukocoria or a white fundal reflex. Now the secondary vitreous is the normal vitreous that is present in our eye and the tertiary vitreous is converted into zonules. Please try to remember the tertiary vitreous is converted into zonules. Now how will you differentiate persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous from retinoblastoma is that PHPV is always unilateral and is only seen in a microphthalmic condition. Whenever the eye is very small, that state you have to suspect PHPV and not a retinoblastoma. The next condition causing a leukocoria is Coats disease. Now, Coats disease is seen in boys in their first decade of life. This boy that you're seeing is having Coats disease, and you see it in young boys. Boys wear coats. Okay, that's how you can remember. The other causes of the uh, leukocoria are retinopathy of prematurity, toxocariasis, endophthalmitis, retinal detachment, Norris disease, and coloboma.